who has been standing for a pretty long time and like everyone i think he is tired we <laughs> were hoping at least that the, the parade would have ended by then it was two hours was allocated for the parade we have gone into the third hour and we see there the leader of the St. Alphonsus Scout Troop, Jeff Joseph, doing the salute to the Prime Minister. government band, 50 years of serving Dominica in the sphere of music and of course we expect to see them in the more official way when they do the performance at the parade, they put on the musical accompaniment for the national parade at the botanical garden. As the Music Lovers Government Band takes us through, we come to the end of our broadcast here at the Glanville Plain School. We hope you have enjoyed looking at the National Schools Parade, which brought together some 56 rep rep primary schools being represented here and some 14 secondary schools. One of the largest parades we have seen in a very long time. Schools from all over Dominica being represented here on the Glanville Plain Field. We hope that you have enjoyed watching and we look forward to bringing you more as the years go by. From all of us here at Marvin Telecoms, Frederick, who has been behind the scenes, Adina Bella Valentine, being you so long. Well, basically, the, the consultation is, 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 a, is to bring all stakeholders together so they could express their views on various aspects of the redevelopment plan because we believe that everybody needs to get involved from the inception of the, of, of the, of the, of the program or the project so that at the end of the day once the college is redeveloped to the stage that we want to get to everybody will be fully aware of, of what, what is involved and what took place because too many times we do things without involving people who the, something is going to directly affect and there are so many issues raised so we figure information is very important and people need to be, feel part of the college because it is Dominica's college. How confident it, are you, though, coming out of this, this um, conference that you've had, most putting everybody together? How confident I'm, are you I'm, that we're I'm forward? very confident because we were able to bring a number of persons, local persons together, and also regional persons, persons who are very interested in, in moves forward. Because if you look at St. Lucia and the, the BVI, I mean, we're way behind. And we recognize that in order for us to get to a point where more persons can go can get into college level like only seven person now gets into college and I mean that's too low and if we spend so much money in overseas training so if we can use those monies that in Dominica to develop our system we'll have more persons in Dominica trained at the highest level um, so we're very optimistic I'm very excited about that that like every Dominican should get excited about this because it's something that we have to do and um, they're going I mean, persons are going to be affected in the process because it's change, and change is very difficult to accept. But if we are a, a, a forward-thinking population, which I know we are, we, have, we will accept this change in good heart and good spirit and come forward and make our contribution because that's important for us to make a contribution to the development of, of the college. And I invite any Dominican, any Dominican who is interested in making a contribution to come forward and say, well, look, I would like to make a contribution. But we, we are looking forward to a September next year merging of, the, of this college. How feasible is that? Well, certainly, I mean, it is feasible. I mean, it, it, you don't necessarily have to have all the structures on a one roof. I mean, in many universities, there are different campuses. Okay. Okay. So we will move forward in that until we will get to a point where all the colleges, all the, all, the, all, the, all the faculties, really, will be on a one roof on one campus. But we will be moving forward in September 2000 to implement some of the um, steps towards the development of the college system.
I think I, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm, if, if that's the case, it's unfortunate that they were left out. But it's not too late. Uh, it's not. A, it's not. It's not a, a, a closed session, really. And I think um, anybody who's interested, I say, can come forward and make a contribution. But certainly, I believe that that we will broaden the the, the consultation process. It's just a start, and and, and there's no doubt that the, that the PSU will have its voice, and, and indeed many, many trade unions. Um, but we, we can. The, the PSU can still come forward and make a contribution to the development of the policy system.
Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, reading of the word of God will be done by Reverend George Del Salmi of the Methodist Church and prayer for the nation shall be offered by Pastor David Serrano of the Pentecostal Assembly. Please stand. A reading from Psalm 96. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. Honor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty in his sanctuary. Sing among the nations, the Lord is king. His word is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. The word of the Lord. Accept the Lord, build a house. Deliver in vain that build it. Accept the Lord, keep the city. The watchman waketh, but in vain. Almighty Father and our God, we thank you once again for this occasion whereby we as a nation can return thanks to you for your goodness on this land. We thank you that, Lord, you have seen us safely through one more hurricane season. We thank you, God, that we as a nation can live in relative peace and tranquility while the world around us seems to be in turmoil. Lord, as we come before you this morning, we confess our sins as a nation. We admit that, Lord, in so many ways, we have forsaken you. We have rebelled against you. We have turned our backs against you. But this morning, oh God, I pray on behalf of the nation that, Lord, you'll forgive our sins. You'll heal our land, oh God, and you'll take us back to us to yourself. We ask your blessings right now, oh God, upon the prime minister of this country. We pray one more time, O oh God, for wisdom, for understanding, O oh God, and for guidance. Lord, the parliament of our land, we commit into your hands at this time. We commit, O oh God, every sector of this, of this country into your hands, O oh God. The private sector, the financial sector, O oh God, the agricultural sector, Lord, the tourism sector, the manufacturing sector, Lord, we commit into your hands this morning. The youth of our country, O oh God, we commit also into your hands. We just pray that God, even as we reflect upon ourselves as a nation, that Lord, indeed, you'll guide us. And Lord, this morning, I want to pray that you're going to break every curse upon this country right now, that for so long have kept, O oh God, this country in darkness. We pray for a releasing right now, O oh God, of every territorial curse, O oh God, over every, O oh God, spirit over this country right now, 
We pray for a releasing right now by the blood of Jesus. And so we plead the blood right now, Father, upon our country, upon our land, upon the church in this country, we plead the blood. Upon the government of God, we plead the blood as we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Please be seated. On the occasion of our National Day and the celebration of our 23rd anniversary of independence, I am pleased to invite the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica, Honorable Pierre Charles, to address the nation. Members of the disciplined forces and other uniformed groups, distinguished guests, fellow Dominicans, friends, well wishers. <coughs> Since I spoke to you one year ago on the anniversary of our country's independence, there have been seismic occurrences on the international landscape that have had a profound effect on the Commonwealth of Dominica. Last year, as I spoke to you, I discussed the issues relating to the repositioning of Dominica to cope with the multifarious issues that confronted us as the world proceeded precipitously into globalization. At that time, strong recessionary trends had begun to emerge in the world economy. Not only the United States of America, but also Europe and Japan experienced an economic slowdown. In short, the G7 economies, which are the seven strongest economies in the world and which collectively drive the world's economy, were all exhibiting stagnation. These reversionary trends have now become a recession propelled by the terrorist disaster which occurred on September 11th of this year when hijacked planes were flown into the World Trade Center, demolishing it and causing thousands of people to perish. The civilized world is now at war against the perpetrators of terrorist acts, and no crystal ball can, re can reveal when this war will end. This is the background, my dear people, against which this independence message is made. When this country went into independence, we as Dominicans were proud to assert that we had the capability of looking after our own affairs. At that time, we understood the implications of independence. We understood that the people of Dominica must be prepared to accept good times as well as bad times. Since then, however, our, market, our banana markets have become truncated. Our incipient tourist industry is stalled and our development plan, uh, plan awaits execution as this government wa works to acquire the necessary capital to finance these projects. That is the reality of the situation we face. I see no point in my today spinning words or seeking to gloss over the harsh economic realities that confront us. On assuming office, I pledge to be honest and upfront in my every action, and that includes my every utterance. There are those who believe that as a politician, I should create a false sense of hope and comfort. While I am hopeful and indeed optimistic, I am also chastened to the realities of the economic downturn being experienced not only here in Dominica, but across the region and the world. My most sobering encounter of this came a few days ago when I received an email from a Dominican national living in a sister Caribbean island inquiring of the possibility of returning home and finding employment. Since 
according to her, and I quote, things are very, very hard here where I am, end of quote. She is living in a country, my dear people, to which hundreds of Dominicans fled to supposedly greener pastures in the 1980s and early 1990s. Today, we are being told that the green pastures of old are now brown and barren, and that returning home to Dominica is a more attractive proposition. I take no comfort in this, because the reality is that many of you have relied on, over the years on remittances from relatives and friends living abroad. The sad reality today, however, is that whether those relatives and friends are resident in sister Caribbean islands, in Europe, the Virgin Islands, or North America in particular, the current recession and the spate of layoffs and business closures is having a deleterious impact on those economies. In preparing this address, ladies and gentlemen, I consulted several regional publications and even reviewed recent national addresses by several of my Caribbean colleague prime ministers. Time would not permit me on this occasion to quote them verbatim, but suffice it to say that from island to island, north to south, and east to west, the story of amazing economic decline is the same. None is more inspiring than the other. From Suriname and Guyana in the south, to Antigua and St. Kitts and the Virgin Islands in the north, economic symptoms are the same. High fever running through the major pillars of the respective economies. The prognosis is for slow, gradual recovery, spanning a period of at least nine to 18 months. On my return to Dominica two Thursdays ago, news came from St. Lucia of the closure of the fourth major hotel in less than three months. This has brought to just under 1,000 the number of workers displaced as a result of certain hotel closures in that sister island. And they, incidentally, are also plagued with the challenges and frustrations that beset our banana industry. The same holds true for Antigua and Barbuda, where the government there is, set in, is getting set in another two weeks to embark on a major public sector retrenchment program, which, as I hinted before, will affect several of our very own Dominican nationals who live and work in that country. Already, private sector leaders in Barbados have taken massive salary cuts, while public sector unions have magnanimously agreed to a wave of negotiations for a wage increase in light of the current difficulties and the dark economic cloud that hover over that country. Against that backdrop, ladies and gentlemen, Dominicans have been called upon today to demonstrate the resilience, maturity, and ingenuity that would hopefully have evolved from 23 years of national independence. 